hello. We are here for our first edition of our AMD talk show, Per Jenny's Amazing Idea. And we're going to have an American Mom of the Week. This week we have Taylor Beaudry. Did I say it right? Yeah, that's uh, Taylor Beaudry Paramount, but it's Okay. It's good. Taylor, Taylor Beaudry works too. Well, on Facebook, your name is Taylor Beaudry. I know. It's super confusing. It's, yeah, exactly. Let's stick with that. It's Let's go Facebook with the Facebook me. one. Exactly. There's a really long story about why I have so many different names, but we can talk about that another time. <laughs> but yes. yes. No, let's, we can talk about that now. This is the talk show. This is when yeah. this stuff, we okay. want to learn about Taylor. Where are you from? What brought you to Dubai? How long have you been here? Like okay, well, the whole thing. Well, First, hi everyone, and thank you so much. I'm so like touched. I get to be the first one on this talk show, which, by the way, I love this concept. It's amazing. Okay. Um, I kind of but, twisted your arm, to be honest, but okay. <laughs> maybe no. Okay. Um, so okay. Um, so I am from Cape Cod, Massachusetts, which is where Dawson Creek was filmed, or at least was supposedly be filmed. That's where it was supposed to be taking place, but it actually was filmed, I think, in North Carolina. But I am from there, so people actually are from there. And then I, after I graduated high school, I moved to Virginia and like the Nova DC area for about 10 years. And then I met my husband, who is French, but was working in Switzerland. And then I moved to Switzerland and then moved here three years ago. So I was in Switzerland. I've been an expat for almost 10 years now. So like, that's my story. Um, I don't know what else would you like to no, Oh, the background about my name. Okay. So I, in Switzerland, right before we got married, we couldn't keep our, ma our maiden name. What I wanted to do with my name is I wanted to do like Taylor Beaudry Paramount, which is what I have it listed here. And that's what's listed on my passport. But in Switzerland, <laughs> they don't accept that. Like it's not possible anymore. Literally the year before I got married, they changed it. So you have to either keep your maiden name, your husband can take your name if he wants, or you go with the husband's last name. So you have like three options. You can't hyphenate it or, or do two last names anymore. So like, that's why I never changed my Facebook name for whatever reason, but like, I don't, I go by a bunch of different names because it depends on like which document you're looking at. Cause if you, what did you find out about AMD when you first moved here? I found out through a wonderful woman, Asia. So there's actually a really good story too. Since this is a talk show, I'll get into it, but I'll make it really short. So I moved here and then three weeks, within like three weeks, we went out to like our first brunch with my daughter and my parents were visiting. And I, and my mother is always trying. I mean, I love her. I love her. But she's always trying to like make me make friends. For some reason, she thinks I'm like not able to do it on my own. So we were out at this brunch and this woman walks by with her son who's adorable. And she, <laughs> my mom's like, oh, she looks, and why she thought this woman was American, I have no idea. I mean, she could be from anywhere. I have no idea why she thought, oh, that woman's American. There was nothing particularly American about her. Maybe she heard her speaking. I don't know. She's like, I think we need to go be friends with her. I was like, okay, mom, I think it's okay. Like, I wasn't like, I wasn't like crying in the corner. Like, I need, I need friends. And she says, I think you need to, so my mom walks up to her and starts talking to her. And she's like, oh, I think you would get along with my daughter. So that's how. And then she told me about this group. And that's, and ever since I've been like, I love it. I'm a pretty so like. you reach out to me through Instagram or something? Because we started having a conversation yes. on Messenger. And then we ended up meeting really shortly after you moved here, right? Yes. It was at, what happened was that. I asked to join the group, but for some reason, like, I don't know what happened. Like, I didn't hear anything. So I messaged you directly to be like, can I join the group? Because uh, Asia had told me, like, this is an amazing thing and blah, blah, blah. And that's how it, like, came out. And then, yes, then we got together. And now our kids go to the same school. So <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's a really tight community. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you have a daughter. Tell us about your family. Yes, I have a daughter who is four. Her name is Sabine. She was born in Geneva and we moved here when she was eight months old. And I have four stepchildren that are older. So they're in their twenties and the youngest one is 18. And I came into their lives when the youngest one was almost nine. So I went through the teenage thing four times. 
<laughs> before I went through the toddler thing, which I'm not really sure which one is better or worse. I guess it depends on the kid, but I've, I've been there. So it's like, I did it totally in reverse. Like unlike my sister who has four children, now they're one is a teenager now, but she has four children. And at a time, like all of them were quite young. And like, she was going through that toddler thing. And I was going through the teenage thing. And I was like, just wait till the teenage thing comes. And she's like, well, just wait till you have a toddler. So now where have you lived? Where yes. Have you lived? Yeah, okay. So I have lived in Italy um, quite a while ago. <laughs> I lived in Italy. I've lived, like I said, in the United States, where I'm from, from in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, and then DC area. I lived in New York for a very, like not lived, I guess I spent quite a bit of time in um, New York City when I was younger. And then as an adult, uh, I moved to Switzerland. So I lived in Neuchâtel, Switzerland, and then Geneva, Switzerland, and then I moved here. And to Dubai. And what brought you, you got, you came with your husband or did you come on your own? I came with my husband. So okay. yeah, my husband, I mean, this is, well, everybody knows. So my husband, when, when we had our daughter, he's the youngest of, of his five children. So when we had our daughter, I think he was working, a, he's been in corporate his entire life in the luxury goods industry. And he was a little bit tired of the travel schedule. It was, it was pretty intense. I mean, he was gone like at least two weeks a month and usually like on, I mean, different like time zones all the time. And he really felt like he was missing out. So when our daughter turned about six months, I could see it was kind of wearing on him. Like he didn't want to miss out on my daughter's like on those first couple of years, he really wanted to be more present. And it was tough on him because I think when, at least with the first, his first three children, his last one, he had his own consulting practice. And so he was home a lot more, but the first three children, I think he felt like he missed out on that part of their life, his, their lives. So he didn't want to go through that again. And so he's like, I think I want to like retire or not retire, but shift out of corporate. Let's put it that way. Like go in the entrepreneurial route. And so I said, okay. And he's like, well, I mean, he's not Swiss. My husband's not Swiss. I mean, he, he and my daughter have the Swiss passport, but he's, he's not Swiss and he, we didn't really want to go back to France. That's where he was. He didn't want to, we didn't want to go back to the United States at the time. And so we're like, okay, well, where can we go? And for him, his network for business, a lot of it is in Asia, the Middle East and Europe. And so he's like, okay, let's try Dubai. I mean, it's fun. We have been here many different times on holiday and for work. And I had been here a couple of different times for work before. So I thought, okay, let's, let's give it a shot. Plus I was, I was really happy to, I mean, I'd been in Switzerland for, six years at that point. And I think it's good to, I always think it's good to have change. I mean, I love traveling. I love, I love a, anything that challenges my perspective, anything that's, I like change. I mean, to as much extent as we can like change, I like change. So I was like, okay, let's try it. So that's why we came here and we opened our own consulting company um, um, as luxury management consulting. We opened that when we came here and actually we opened at the end of 2016 and started 2017. And then actually now he's back working for corporate again, because I think it's like, he just can't get it out of his system, but he was at the time doing that. So now we have um, somebody else managing that project for us. And I do work a little bit with that project, but that's, I mean, Marlo said she was going to ask me a little bit later about what I'm doing now, like what my real passion project is, but I do work uh, for our company that we have here. And then I have this own, this other company um, that well, I that's your, What's your background in? What did you study? Yeah, I studied uh, my undergraduates in international affairs and my mass. I have an I have a master's in international affairs and an MBA in international business. Finance. Okay. So I did business, I guess, for my last degree was business. I did start a doctorate in business as well when I was well, in Switzerland, but then I became pregnant and I had a little bit of a difficult pregnancy. So I stopped doing that. And then we moved here. It was kind of a very unexpected shift to move here. And then I kind of stopped. I haven't defended my thesis. So, but I did start. So business, business is my, is I guess my background, international business is my background. But that's not your passion, I understand. No, I would say, I would say the international part is definitely my passion. Okay. Um, I would say that the cross-cultural like communications and the blends of different cultures is definitely my passion. But like, I really love, and what, what I love to talk about is I do, um, I started my own company last year and it does international, it does, sorry, etiquette and image consulting. And about etiquette, it is, it is social etiquette. So social etiquette is, you know, dining, like how to eat properly, how to speak properly, how to have a, how to hold conversation correctly. It is that part. There is another part, which is cross-cultural communication. So it's a, being an effective communicator and what that means. I think that's really critical and important for where we live and actually anywhere now because everything is becoming totally globalized. And then the last part about it is I do do image consulting. So that is 
like a stylist. I have I got certificates in styling and I have a diploma in um, in etiquette, inter international business etiquette and social etiquette. So I went back to school when I moved here. One year into moving here, I thought, you know, my daughter, she was a little almost two actually a year and a half when I went to the school. And I thought, you know, I really need to do something because I don't want to do international PR because that's what I was doing before. I was working for a university, traveling all over the world. I lived in planes for like years. I was living in planes. And I was like, I can't possibly do that again right now because I can't be away from my daughter. And I, plus my husband, we had made this shift to be all together as a family and not be doing that. So I was like, I have to do something else. And I, I've always loved this etiquette and my friend, about three years prior had come to visit me in Switzerland because she was going to this school in Switzerland to learn this kind of thing. Cause she also loves it. And I thought, okay, you know, that sounds amazing. And I had talked to my husband at the time and was like, listen, I really would love to do this. But at that moment I was doing my PhD and I, we were, we were trying to have a family and stuff like that. So this was a complicated time. And so I was like, okay, what can, I won't do it now. I'll just shelf it. But then when I came here, I thought, you know, I really want to do it. And my husband was like, you know what, go ahead. Like I'm home now. Like it's not, it'll be easy for us to make this work. It's a lot. It's, it was, it was a good, good timing to do that. So that's when I decided to go back to school and get my diploma in, in etiquette, which is a, which is a passion project because it's, I mean, the way I was raised with my, my mom, she always was very instilling this in us about etiquette and proper, the way to behave properly, but also the, the emotional components of that too, which is like empathy and being really conscious and being really gracious and things like that. And we, she did send us to courses when we were younger and she also hosted a lot of parties. And my mom, I mean, she's pretty fabulous, but my mom hosted a lot of parties in our house and we always had people like coming and going and she was always teaching us. She really instilled us. It was important for us to know that just like my dad on the other hand was like, you need to learn how to rewire stuff and like, cut the lawn and like cut I mean no you use power tools you need to know all of that but my mom at the same time was like you also need to know how to you know behave in a certain way and so I was always really I don't know, I always love it and I love the details of it so that's well, I uh, love uh, how I came to you because I mean I see you all the time at school but I came to you when Jenny and I were going to do the Carnistore meat video and I was like look we're going to have a meat eating contest but we don't want to look just disgusting you know like I don't want to be sitting there like this disgusting human eating all this meat which I did do but so you were like okay so like do your makeup really nice and wear something like colored and like you know you helped me and Jenny sort of and make sure like when you're eating you're not like getting sauce all over your face and like right. there's a way to eat in an eating competition where you're not disgusting you know so that was I don't know, that was like a modern take on etiquette, I guess you could say, that I really appreciated your help on because I really didn't want to look like <laughs> some of those guys do when they're stuffing their face full of meat. So I appreciate that. And you do all those super cool kids videos on your channel, which, and even your business videos, I've used them to help my daughter in her like school projects and stuff like that. So there's just a lot of really cool content that you're creating in a new and fresh way that's really accessible, I think, for people now. You know, it's not just learning names of spoons. Yes, yeah, see, I think this is actually, that's huge. So I'm really happy to hear that. I love hearing this feedback because this is, this is why I'm doing this. I mean, I want just like talk about it a little bit is I really when I was going to my etiquette school, which is a great school and I have huge respect for it. But when I was there, I was thinking to myself, okay, this is great. And I'm really happy to have some more formal education in this, but I really want to take this information and make it useful to people because I mean, okay, great. It's, it is, it's nice to have that knowledge of like, what is this spoon and like, what exactly is the service? But at the same time, I think it's more important to know it, like have it in the back of your mind and then use it like a toolkit that you can use for everyday life, which is exactly what you're telling me with your daughter, which is, ex this is exactly why I want to do these videos. Cause it's like, you see it. And it's like the next time you're in that situation, like, like something in your head is like, okay, wait a minute, I've heard this before. So let me just run with it that way versus being like, this is the rule. And I must memorize this. And this has it doesn't have to be this like rigid thing. Etiquette does not need to be this rigid thing. I mean, etiquette is there because it's supposed to help us. I, 
I guess, enrich our lives. It's supposed to give us a little bit more, I guess, I guess it does give you some structure to good behavior, but it doesn't need to be this like formal snotty, like nose turned up, like it must be this way. I mean, that's not what I'm teaching. And that's not, that's actually not either. Cause I think there are so many different ways you can teach etiquette. Like you're saying about the food eat, eating con competition is like, I mean, there's just a way of doing everything. And this, I teach this a lot for the business, international business. Like, there's a way of doing things. It's not that you, it's not that you have to be like, again, rigid and formal about it. And, it, and etiquette doesn't apply to, you know, it applies to every part of everyday life. And it's really the way you do it. And it's a word choice that you've done or the look that you're doing that really impacts all of that. So I'm really glad that she's liking the videos. That makes me so happy. It makes me so happy that the kids are liking the videos. When I hear people's feedback, I'm like, yay. But anyway, the, the, the project <laughs> you're talking about, I'm so excited. I'm like, oh, good people are liking it. No, the project that you're talking about, I started because we're home. Um, teaching kids was always something that I wanted to do. And it's really helpful for me because I'm also teaching my daughter at the same time. So it's like two birds, one stone. <laughs> and so like I said to myself, okay, well, I'm at home now. I can't teach people in person. Etiquette is kind of something that's easier taught if you are in person, but we, I, you can just totally do it on Zoom too. But it, for, for kids, it's a lot easier in person unless I do these videos. So I started doing these videos on Instagram on different topics for kids and for parents and for business people as well. So I'm glad you're finding them helpful. I'm planning on doing a bunch more this week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I love them. Good. I love them. Um, what I want to share with our group is that you have a particularly helpful one for us right now, which I mean, everybody I think who lives here sort of knows, but you go into a little bit more of a detail of why are we doing this? And one of the points I wanted to make after watching your video is like some people I think like they they don't understand why are we doing this for you know people like why can't I eat in public you know and just like they put up Christmas trees here to help our Christmas be better I feel like it's a really great video to just kind of understand why are we doing this for our community why are we following these guidelines for a religion that we may or may not be a part of so I really like the video and I, I will link it down in the comments so everybody can go and take a look at it if they like. Yeah, great. That, yeah, that's actually, so when, so when I, I wanted to do this video, I think it was really important because I mean, I, I'm, I'm not Muslim. So as, as somebody that's looking at this from the outside, the religious, and I'm, I'm relatively new to the Middle East, but I have some very close and dear Emirati friends and I've done iftars with them. And like, I've celebrated this part of the year with them. And actually that's something I'm really missing this year. Like, like really, really sad about it. I've been talking to them like every day. I'm like, I'm really bummed out. They actually sent me some like things that I can have in the nighttime that I normally would be eating with them, you know? So I'm kind of like, it's like, I'm a little bummed out. I mean, obviously there are a lot of other reasons to be bummed out about this period also, but I mean, that's one specific one. And I just, yeah, I just think it was so important to talk to maybe people that just don't, no, or maybe they're just thinking about it in a different way, like this is not relevant to me, but I think it is because we are all, there's a couple of different things. I mean, from an etiquette standpoint, you're being a good guest because we are guests in this country and we should be respectful of the traditions and the, of the culture that we're living in. And this is a huge one for, this is the most important month in the Islamic calendar, Ramadan. So we should be really respectful about, but also we should be contributing to being one community because we are one community here. We are, we may be, I mean, as Americans, we should know this better than anybody. We are one community. We are a mix of every religion and culture and people and everything. So we should understand that we all don't look the same, have the same beliefs, blah, 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 blah. So we should be respectful of, of a different culture as one of the cultures in our community. So I think we need to be, I guess we need to just be that one community like mindset. So that was why I yeah. made that video. Plus also, I mean, if you're new here, a lot of us are, I mean, I, lots of really are veterans here or whatever, lot veteran expats. But for those people that are new, I think there's a lot of information. And so I think maybe if you're hearing it from somebody that's been here and right. or it's easier to like just get it in one kind of piece. And what I'm really happy about too is I'm getting some really good feedback from people that are from here, from, from, from the UAE. They're like, this is really good. And I'm like, fantastic. <laughs> like, thank, good. thank goodness, right? Because I was like, I'm hoping, I mean, I did a lot of research beforehand and I ran it by my friends also a couple of different times because I was like, let me at least make sure I'm not making any mistakes here. But I think it's helpful. So I'm glad that you found it helpful too. Yeah, we, that's, you know, part of running this group is it, it's a transient city. So we'd have you know, turnover every year. So I, I de I'm happy to, that there's something that we can refer to that can help people understand, um, you know, just 
the do's and don'ts and the way to be here, so to yes. say, um, during this time. So thank you for that. Yeah, no, um, I'm really happy. So anything else, Marla? Should we, let's. I think that's it. We learned a lot about you. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this. I know it's a kind of a new format, but I, I mean, I love talking to you. You're just wonderful to be around. If anybody has the opportunity to have coffee with Taylor, please do. You're super down to earth, wonderful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I would love to meet more American moms. Mom. <laughs> I'm just gonna die quickly. Poor mother, she's like, I'm joking. No. I, uh, I, would, <laughs> I would love to like breather. breather. Are you okay? Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> I would love to meet more American moms. I think, like, I, I mean, Marlo and I were having this conversation about, like, talking. I just want to make sure that people understand, like, what I'm doing for etiquette. Because I'm like, if I meet people and they're like, you're an etiquette, like, consultant. And they're like, oh, my gosh, now I have to be careful how I'm behaving or how I'm eating. And I'm like, that's not the case at all. Like, I'm not judging you at all, I promise. <laughs> like, unless you're asking me for your, if you're asking me for, like, tips and, like, advice, which I'm very happy to give, and, like, I'm very happy to help people. But, like, otherwise, it's, like, on and off. Like, for me, it's, like, just on. I can turn it on if I need to turn it on and turn it off. Like, I'm not judging you. So, we can meet for coffee, please. Like, don't be afraid. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't be afraid. Well, almost down to earth, easy to talk to people I know. So. Oh, thank you. That means a lot. Very thank approachable. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Well, eventually, when things get back to normal, we're definitely going to take off again, pick up the coffee mornings and yes. whatever events we, you know, we do throughout the year. So it, it is sad. This year, talk about Ramadan, we always used to have an iftar for the group, um, yeah. which we've first. done twice. Yeah. So we're missing these things, but hopefully, you know, this passes in time and we can go back to normal, so to say. Yes. Yes. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. For yeah. sure. All right. Thank you again, Taylor. It was so yeah. nice to get to know more about you and I'm excited about your Instagram and your videos. I'm going to check those out. And thank you. Um, thank you for, you know, sharing your knowledge and your expertise with the group. Great. It was great to see you both. And thank you for having me. Bye. Bye. Take care.